Hey guys, so I'm down here doing a little work in my reptile room with my bearded dragon beardy, and I was thinking, hey, he's a lizard, and he's pretty big, but he's easy to catch for me, because he is just in his tank. But when I go and see a lizard in the wild, wow, they're hard to catch. They're incredibly fast, incredibly delicate, and how am I gonna catch that? So I thought of a new video for this series, tips and tricks. So this video is gonna be tips and tricks on how to catch wizards. Now, let's get into it. So now when you're out herping, it's pretty easy to catch something like a frog or a toad. You just grab your net, put it around them, and they're stuck in there because they're not that fast they don't really have any way to get away unless they go swimming but other than that they're really easy but there are some herps that are a lot harder to catch and one of those herps are lizards and so i'll teach you guys some tricks and tips to catch yourself your very own lizard when you're going out herping for lizards you'd think it would be pretty easy they're just sitting there on a rock or a log basking in the sun you're like oh i'll just walk up on it and grab it well it's nowhere near that easy often lizards are very small and fast and they'll see you coming quickly so if you get near they're just gonna bolt away but throughout my years of herping i've learned a few key tips and tricks and i actually have three main methods the sponge method the net method and the tree method so let's get into the first one, the sponge method. Maybe you're thinking, sponges? Why would I have them in my bag when I go herping? And how do they help me catch a lizard? Well, it's kind of weird in a way. So because lizards are so fast and speedy and get away quickly, and also because of how delicate they are, you need to be quick, but you don't want to hurt them. So if you see a lizard running away, you can't just slam your hand on it or else you'll injure it. So what you do is you grab sponges. So now these sponges, they're soft, they're pretty. I can push my hand through them and I barely feel my other hand. And they're thick enough that I usually put two together so it's a little thicker and it's more cushiony. So when I find a lizard, I'll go up behind it trying to stay out of the sight, and right as it's trying to run away, or if I'm close enough to grab it, you want to go to the sponge, and you can go quick, and you can slam it. Not slam it per se, but you can be quicker and a little rougher than if you were just doing your bare hand. Because with a sponge, there's a lot less chance of it getting injured. It's like having an airbag in your car. When you crash into something without an airbag, you're a lot more likely to get hurt. But with the airbags, they have give you that cushioning, to help prevent you from getting hurt. Now, I'll go show you guys on uh, my green anoles how to use a sponge to catch them. So now I don't handle my green anoles that often, so they are very flighty. So I'm a little nervous about it, but I'm gonna do it. So let me set the camera down and I'll show you guys how to catch a small lizard with the sponge method. All right, so if you see from down here, don't climb up. Of course, he, he's showing the tree method a little bit, but... Uh, come here. There he is. You can climb up by a tripod. Or maybe you... But here, if you can see him here, you just go back a little. Come here. You see? And then I can just do this. So you see, he's underneath the sponge. And let me bring this around here. Sorry, this is a shaky footage. But you can see here, he's stuck under the sponge. He's not getting hurt in any way. He's completely fine. But I am able to put pressure down and keep him here. So let me flip the camera around. So as you can see, he cannot move. But he's also not getting hurt. If I was putting all this pressure down with just my hand, he might be getting hurt. But because I'm just using the sponges, he's completely fine. And as you can see, he can actually lift him up a little bit. So, yeah. Now, if I lift it up, see? He's completely fine. 
not injured. He can walk and everything's all good. So now I'll get on to the Nets method of catching lizards. The Nets method to catch lizards is the net method. Now, the net method is pretty simple, but there are two key features that you want to do when you're using the net method. You either want a very big opening, like here, it's like a foot long compared to the lizard, or you want this hard edging to be coated in something soft. You can either use sponges from the sponge method, you can use cloth or something, and you need to be very delicate with it. Because you can easily, if you hit a lizard like this, you can easily break their back, either injuring them greatly or even killing them, which is not very good. But if you do it right and you get it like this and keep the lizard away from any of the edges, it should be very safe. Another key tip would be to have a longer handle. This handle, it's pretty short for catching lizards. You'd want it at least another foot so you have that full range. Because if you can see here, I can reach this far. But if I had a longer net, I might be able to reach all the way over there. So, but now let me show you how to catch a green anole using the net method. All right, so don't climb up my back. So here I'll put him down. Of course, can you stop climbing up my tripod? Come over, there he goes. So now see here, go back this way. I can just you can do this a lot quicker in the wild, but I can just lay the net over him. Now, if you see, I made sure, let me flip the camera around. Now, as you see here, I made sure when I grab him to keep him away from the sides of the net. He did eventually move there trying to get away, but he's not damaged because he was in the soft parts of the net and now he's stuck. So now I can, if I want to, I can wait for him to get into this part of the net or I can just put it down, slide my hand underneath as he's trying, and then I can grab him out. And now there's one final method, which I'll show you guys, the tree method. So now my third method for catching lizards is going to be the tree method. Now the tree method is probably the most difficult method because you need a small tree or bush with not a lot of leaves or branches that doesn't get too tall. So now when a lizard is gonna run away from you and try and climb up that tree, they're gonna go through what, the, what I call the squirrel technique. Because if you have ever spooked a squirrel and tried to follow around a tree, if you're on this side of the tree, it's gonna be on that side. And if you go around this, he'll go around this way. So he'll always be on the opposite side of the tree as you. So now if you have a small skinny tree, you can pretty much put your whole hand around that. And if you get the lizard going up that tree, you can be on this side and you can just see, oh, he's up at about this high to put your hand around the tree and just grab him, which is pretty easy, but it's harder because you need to find a good tree to do it and most arboreal lizards are the only ones who will climb up a tree. Most ground dwelling lizards will often go into a burrow or underneath a log or a branch or something. In which case you could just lift that up and try and catch them using the other methods. So let me show you the tree method. I'm gonna use my tripod as a tree. I'm gonna try and get him on the other side. So you see here, he's on the other side of the tree or the tripod in this case, but I can still see him. He doesn't think that though. So with my hand, I can come around and I can grab him like this. Now it's a little harder because you don't have as much visibility, but you still can get behind, grab him and bring him here. So now I'm gonna let this guy go back to his tank and I'll talk about the honorable mention from this video. This Fourth method is only an honorable mention because I've never had the chance to use it or try it, so I can't rate it to you guys. But this method involves using a lizard pole, which I'll put a picture up here. But I've never used this, but scientists have said that it's very good for research. So what you do is you use the pole and you get the circle at the end around the head of the lizard, and then you pull it tight. 
So the lizard is not being choked or damaged in any way, but it does restrict their movement. And then from there, you can go up and grab it. You wouldn't necessarily lift it up like that because that could be very damaging to the back and the neck of the lizard, but it is a good way of catching lizards. So now I have never tried this method, as I said before, but I am looking fo forward to, and hopefully next year I will be getting myself my very own lizard pole.